Hi everyone. Hello. Welcome to another MSI Insiders weekly live stream. My name is Mike. I'm my together name, with my name is Eric. <laughs> Today, I think most people know you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So last week we had a stream about uh, Computex and we've shown uh, a lot of our different products that we show at Computex this year. Computex is running right now. And um, the big thing at Computex is of course AMD uh, announcing Ryzen third gen uh, CPUs and the AMD X570 chipset. Yeah, uh, Mike is still a little bit watching out what he's telling you. What, what can I say and <laughs> what can't I say? <sighs> this is the... Uh, AMD NDA. Um, this Bible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a lot, I, I cannot show it on the stream. Anyway, because still a lot of things are under NDA. But, um, yeah, I mean, so. So we, sometimes you see us carefully thinking, yeah. what can we say? <laughs> so, I, and I, I know you guys have a lot of questions about this platform, about the CPU. We cannot tell you everything. Uh, but we can tell you a lot already yeah. uh, about MSI X570. We cannot tell you mainboard. all the technical AMD details, No, nope. but we can tell you a lot of MSI details. Yeah. We even uh, have here a list with all mainboards and... A lot of specs. Yeah, you see this cross here, so all models you can also not mention. But well, we have a lot to show. Yeah. You already see a nice box here. That's already teasing one of the models that we will show today. And we will even take some stuff apart from that. Um, and of course, we will have a very nice giveaway. So please go to msi.com slash two slash insider. There you can perform uh, a couple of actions. The more actions you perform, the bigger chance you will have to win. And today we're giving away several 20 US dollars Steam wallet codes. Um, yeah. So if you have any questions in between, please drop them in chat. Um, we cannot answer all of them, but we'll try to answer as many as possible. Um, I think Eric will also drop the link in chat for the people who yeah, cannot I just did. Uh, reach it. Perfect. Yeah, so we have a little bit of uh, uh, issue with the YouTube chat, but we can still read it. So uh, you should, should be, be able okay. to see everything now. Yes. Uh, I already see some people talking about Mystic, uh, Mystic Light Infinity 2. You're already teasing stuff <laughs> that we were going to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> so... Uh, later, uh, we have, uh, I think, all the bars here, right? Except Eric, one. They want to see a high five between us. Problem <laughs> solved. They, they're, not, they're, not, they're, they're not sure <laughs> if it's live. Anyway, so uh, we have uh, all the bars here except one for now. Um, we will show that in the future. Yeah. Um, later, we'll also talk about all the bars. We will even. But we have the, in my opinion, most interesting models. Yeah, yeah, oh, for sure. You have a screwdriver, right? I, I do. Yeah, I will so need it later on. So. We're going to remove the heat sinks. We're going to talk about the VRM designs. We're going to talk about uh, uh, a lot everything. of details. So yeah. maybe first let's uh, uh, recap uh, a little bit what AMD uh, announced. Yeah, so AMD had their keynote on Monday, it was. Yeah. Uh, and there they announced their third generation of Ryzen CPUs. So we already had uh, first gen, like the introduction of Ryzen. Then we had uh, Pinnacle Ridge, second generation, the 2000 series. So yeah. first gen was the first Zen architecture uh, CPUs. Yeah. Then the second generation was like, it was not a completely new architecture. It was like an oh. improvement yeah. on the... From, from, they went from 40 nanometer to, uh, to 12 nanometer, nanometer yeah. a big improvement. Yeah. Uh, uh, clock speeds went up, so... Yeah. So, th but it, it's more like an improvement of the existing Zen architecture. Yes. So that's why they also named yeah. it Zen Plus. Yeah. And the third generation, it's a bit confusing, but it will be based on the Zen 2 architecture. So it will be a completely new architecture. Yeah. Um, but it will still be on uh, socket AM4. Yeah. So that's something that... Uh, that's also something what we will later discuss. Because, yeah. you know, uh, AMD promised longevity, which basically means uh, if you buy now AM4 main, but in the future you can upgrade it to a, a future CPU. Which is true. However, there are a little bit... Uh, a few remarks. Yeah. Uh, we will talk later about that. Um, but yeah, this also, I mean, besides the uh, 7 nanometer, which will offer um, more sp higher speeds, but also uh, And that's a big power thing, 7 nanometer. Yeah, they also have new PCI Express. Yeah, exactly. Um, so we went from 14 to 12 and now to 7. Yes. So that's in a very short period of time, a lot smaller, and that gives some new opportunities. So yeah. for example, more cores. Um, because you don't need as much space as with uh, a bigger uh, chip. So you can essentially put more cores on the same physical space. Yeah. Um, but also, uh, usually if you have a, 
a newer uh, process, you will also have lower power usage, stuff like that. Yeah. They also uh, worked on the IPC, which basically means the instructions per... What is that now? was a little bit confusing. <laughs> this morning, w when we were talking yeah. about this, we both had a different opinion and we were both wrong. Yeah, it was... What was the, it? Was I in had instructions per clock. But it was instructions per cycle. cycle I oh, think, yeah. oh, yeah, anyway, something like but that. But essentially, IPC. And what it essentially means is that... Um, how your processor will perform at a certain clock speed. So if you have processor A uh, on three, three gigahertz and you have processor B on three gigahertz, but processor B has a better IPC, then it will perform better. So what AMD promised was uh, a little bit confusing because we yeah. saw slides with an IPC improvement uh, in comparison to the previous Ryzen generation uh, of 13%. Yeah. But when AMD had a presentation two days ago, they're talking about 15%. Yeah, yeah, I think you have the slide over there, yeah, right? Yeah. So, this, so we're this, not sure. Is it 13? Or the, I mean, the, 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 the slide in the back yeah. came from Anantec. Uh, they published the deck uh, of the whole presentation AMD was going to present or present it. And so except doing... for this number, or the same slide. Yeah. But anyway, so we, I mean, 14% is uh, also decent. We're still, yeah. So 13 or 15%, we're, we're getting a decent improvement in yeah. IPC. At least that's what AMD is promising. I have a question of PC Master Race. Uh, when, do, when can we compare the X299 Game Pro Carbon AC versus X570? This will be on the uh, 7th of July, because then all these products will be launched. Uh, this is also what an, uh, AMD announced during their keynote. And from that moment, uh, I believe, uh, also all the benchmarks will go online. And uh, for sure, uh, your favorite website will also include uh, X299. I'm not sure this particular model, but one of the boards. But keep in mind that these are slightly different platforms because X299 rifles AMD's X399 and they are both high-end desktop platforms. X570 is the successor of X470, so that will rival the, um, the Z chipsets yeah. from Intel. So in this case, it will rival uh, Z390. I have a question. Um, uh, what do you think the cost? Well, uh, actually, you mean the the, the, the price in the in the store uh, of the X570 Gaming Plus? Sorry, we cannot talk. Uh, we cannot mention the mainboard uh, prices. Uh, they're still yeah. under NDA, so this will be later uh, when we can talk about them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let, maybe let's continue. I mean. Uh, they had a whole lineup of all different kind of CPUs, so maybe we yeah. let's start. So we had the like the, the basics of Zen, but they also announced a couple of models already. Yeah. So here we have an overview with different models. Uh, so during the keynote itself, they announced three different models: the uh, two Ryzen seven models and one Ryzen nine model. Yeah. Um, but they also sent out a press release where they also announced two Ryzen five models. So the Ryzen five models are six cores. Um, they all have simultaneous multi-threading, so they will all offer double amount of threads. So six cores will have 12, uh, 12 threads and eight cores will have 16 threads. So Ryzen 7 will have eight threads like we're used to from the previous generation. And something new. And something new, Ryzen 9. Um, and so far they, they introduced one model which will offer 12 cores and 24 threads. Yeah, this was really impressive. I mean, if you look at the SKU, all the information, the the orange one is the new SKU, and on yeah. top of that we put the Thread Ripper, the 2920X. Yeah, because we could not compare it to the previous generation, no. because there was no 12 yeah. core. And, and, and you know, we can compare this with Intel based on specs, but, you know, clock speeds, and, and it really depends on the architecture. Yeah. So you need to benchmark them. And, and AMD, I mean, if you don't know any benchmarks, watch the AMD keynote. Uh, they showed some uh, benchmark indications, I mean, best to wait until media is, is testing this um, but yeah this is pretty impressive because this is offering the same number of course as the uh, 2920x for a much lower price and also at a lower tdp because the the thread ripper cpu comes at 180 watt and the cost at this moment yeah. is 629 us dollars and this one is 400 of let's say 500 us dollars and comes at 105 watt so that's a big gap for the same number of course and there are more differences because Threadripper is still on the Zen Plus architecture. Yeah. Whereas Ryzen 9 will be on the Zen 2 architecture. Higher IPC. Higher IPC, exactly. Um, 40%, also, right? Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but also PCI Express Gen 4. Yes, indeed. So, so will, why 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 do you want me still to buy Threadripper? What's the use? It of depends it? a bit on your use case. If you're 
a gamer, don't consider Threadripper. No. You will be better off with yeah. Ryzen 9. Um, if you're doing um, content creation, for example, if you need a lot of PCI Express lanes, uh, Threadripper still offers more uh, PCI Express lanes because it's the high-end desktop platform, yeah. whereas Ryzen 9 will be on a mainstream platform, so it will not have as many lanes available. Still quite a lot, but if you're really an extremely high demanding user, then it still in some situations could be worth it to pick Threadripper over yeah. Ryzen 9. And also Threadripper at the moment goes up to 32 cores with 64, 64 threads. threads. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas Ryzen 9 so, goes so up to So that's 12, more 24. content creation, like yeah. workstation like uh, Exactly, but if you do a lot of 3D rendering, yeah. stuff like that. If you really need video rendering, insane, CPU rendering, an yeah. insane amount of cores with a yeah. lot of processing power, yeah. then the high-end desktop platform is definitely yeah. still worth it. I mean, if you look at this, I I assume they will do something with the price. Uh, yeah, at least for the lower end. Yeah. yeah. Because um, now this you is, will have this a direct. No, this is no dilemma. No. This is very clear. You go for Ryzen 9. Yeah. For the higher end, you have no choice because yeah. Threadripper. Yeah. And, and at the higher end, I mean, they're very competitive with Intel. Definitely. At, yeah. the, at the same Maybe price, high, yeah. they tend to go for double the cores, cores or yeah. more cores. I see a lot of questions about B450, the architecture, uh, the chipset heat. We will all go into that. So wait a little bit. I see some speculations about price. Yeah, so Ryzen 7, I also saw a very interesting CPU there, right? Yeah, actually, two interesting CPUs. Um, so we have, uh, in, in the previous generation, we had Ryzen 7 uh, 2700 and 2700X. Yeah. And um, essentially, the difference between those two CPUs is the clock speed and also the TEP, which is related to that. Um, so the 2700X is essentially a faster model of the same CPU. Now we can see a similar thing with uh, Ryzen 7 3700X and 3800X. So they're both now X models. Hey, but Scarlet is there again. Hey, Scarlet. <laughs> um, so now they're both X models, but they have different numbers. So that's maybe slightly confusing. Um, and also the uh, 3700X will have... 65 watt TDP like the 2700 had and the uh, 3800X will have a 105 watt TDP yeah. like the 2700X had. But we see a pretty big improvement in clock speeds. So if you compare, for example, the, the 2700 with its 65 watt TDP to the 3700X, which also has a 65 watt TDP, you can see the base clock goes from 3.2 to 3.6 and a boost clock from 4.1 to 4.4. Um, but it's not only the, the difference in, in megahertz, but Gen it's also the, I, but also the IPC. So yeah. for each megahertz, you will also get more speed with yeah. the newer generation. And AMD already showed during that keynote some uh, benchmarks, uh, yeah. some indicative benchmarks. Uh, looks really promising. Yeah, it does. Yeah, so and especially this uh, 3700X, I think this will I think that one sell is really good. I think it's in the sweet spot yeah, because absolutely. also you can, of course, overclock it yourself. Yeah. So you could buy a 3700X and overclock it and get 3800X speeds in performance, for example. Yeah. Um, but also the, the 3700X is at the same price point MSRP as the 2700X. Um, of course, at the moment, uh, the 2000 series are selling cheaper. They dropped a little bit in price. Um, they weren't lucky on the live stream. Well, maybe somebody can have, bring Lucky. Yeah, I don't know if we have a Lucky on hand yeah, right now. Not here, <laughs> but we have. Yeah, so let's let's move to Horizon 5. Yeah, so for Horizon 5, we see a similar trend. So, yeah. um, But in this case, we do have an, a non-X model. So this is more a bit the name and rule that we're used to. So 2600 goes to 3600. They will even have the exact same MSRP. Um, and 2600 will go to 3600. 3600 is slightly more expensive, uh, 20 US dollar higher MSRP, but it will give you higher clock speeds, higher uh, boost speed, higher IPC, PCI Express Gen 4, etc. So definitely uh, worth considering. And also yeah. the uh, 2600 was a very popular model in the 2000 series, 
So I expect the same from the 3600. I see a lot of people talking about the benchmarks uh, on, on YouTube uh, mm -hmm. that you cannot trust them from AMD. That's always why we say, you know, just wait until the, the yeah. editors, your, your favorite media is doing some benchmarks on the different platforms because uh, and then we also have com like compare standardized comparisons yes. with uh, their Intel counterparts. Yeah, then you know what to expect. Yeah. Uh, and also surprising, uh, if we see here the, uh, the Ryzen 5 2600, uh, it used to be introduced as 199, so 200 US dollars at NEWAC, uh, USA, and now it's already 165, so uh, a very attractive price. And also the, the 2700 had a very big price drop because it, it's 299 MSRP, yeah. but it's already available for 210. Yeah, could be some uh, interesting uh, yeah. picks right now. True. Yeah, if you, I mean, if you are satisfied with Gen 3, because Gen 4, that's, I think, a big change, right? That's definitely a big change. Yeah, so what we see in the in the last few years, each, let's say, three to four years, uh, there's a new yeah. generation of uh, uh, PCI Express. Uh, so um, you had AGP in the past, PCI, um, uh, and then, you know, PCI Express X1. When, when was this? 2005 or something? 915? Or earlier? So which one? Which generation? Yeah, the first the one? First, I think... 2005 x38 maybe no it's earlier earlier I PCI mean, express you i, I already yeah, had true. PCI express yeah. on my 915p motherboard yeah oh you're old <laughs> <laughs> anyway uh, so, so that was the first generation yeah, and each three years that they're trying to improve yeah. of uh, trying to have a new version and basically they're uh, doubling the bandwidth so from uh, PCI express gen 3 what you now most have on your boards uh it will double to uh from 32 to 64 gigabytes per second so um yeah, and then that's uh, yeah. So it's not small improvements no. from generation to generation. It doubles the speed pretty much. Yeah, it was a little bit different in the earlier because it went from um, half speeds, right? No, it, there, there was slight. Um, I think. Oh, with the first, overhead, oh, we you can mean. see it on the the slide right now. No, it was in the beginning. It were not exactly doubling the speed, but in the last three generations, yeah, it doubled every yeah. time. And I already see PCI Express Gen Five, right? Yeah, that one. So it's now 2019, so that we can expect like somewhere in 2022. Mm, yeah, probably. Plus three. Yeah, yeah. That will be, uh, yeah, educated guess. <laughs> yeah. Educated guess indeed. So um, and those guidelines they are already defined by the organization behind PCI yeah. Express. They're defining so, the the, the yeah. specs. Yeah, which exactly. everybody has to follow so everything is compatible. Yeah. So let's maybe talk a little bit about um, uh, when do you get PCI Express Gen 4? Uh, because it's, it's um, I mean, it's actually very simple. If you buy X570 and you have a third generation Ryzen CPU, you get Gen 4. With those two, it's very simple. Yeah, with yeah. those two, it's very <laughs> simple. Um, that's also both, why you see yeah. the thumbs up. Uh, then if you have an X570, but you use it with a 2000, series so with uh, the second generation of ryzen you only get gen 3 and this basically is because in the cpu there is no gen 4 available so also the chipset doesn't get any gen 4 so everything runs just at gen 3. the cpu is also connected to the chipset yeah um because that combination doesn't both allow it you don't get it yeah uh, then if we look at the right uh, bottom side the, if you look at the old platform x470 and you combine it with, of course, the, the second generation, what most people have right now. No, no Gen 4, no. just Gen 3. Not possible. Yeah, not CPU possible. CPU doesn't support it, so not possible. And then we have a tricky situation, which is basically the old platform, X470. I, I should not say old platform, right? The current platform. The current platform. Yeah. X570 is the future platform. Yeah. So the current platform, X470, and you purchase a new third generation Ryzen CPU, which gives you Gen 4 we don't know really what you're going to get because you probably already saw from msi some screenshots online from uh, some uh, bios options that uh, there will be gen 4 in the uh, x470 bios and we're testing that right now the problem is it doesn't run stable uh, yeah. so it works sometimes kind of Kind of. <laughs> and because of this, I mean, everybody's validating this now, testing it. And because of this, uh, AMD is considering to remove it. It was never designed to run on X470. It would be nice if it can run on X470. But if it gives you an unstable experience, then yeah. 
it's better yeah. not to have it. So, and at this moment, there's still no decision made. So, I mean, in the, in the coming months, uh, probably uh, you'll hear more about this. Um, but it's not a logical combination uh, because it's much better to take X570 with the third generation to benefit uh, PCI Express Gen 4. Yeah, and that's also because in X570 we did a lot of improvements yeah. to get a on good the, signal on yeah. PCI Express. Uh, it's, it's PCB, it switches, because basically I, I think if you uh, look at Computex, a, a lot of... Uh, uh, interviews or a lot of articles they're talking about that that it's very difficult to make a x570 mainboard right yeah it is because the uh, you really need the clearest signal possible to get proper pci express gen 4 uh, connection so that's also uh, on the slide here you can see uh, what we incorporated on this depends per model of course yeah but this is uh, a picture from uh, our creation motherboard, which we will show later. Um, and what you can see here is that we use a special PCB for a clearer signal. Um, so you don't get any interference and really get stable uh, PCI Express Gen 4. This, this, is, this is like server grade PCB, so yeah. it's also pretty expensive. It is, it is more yeah. expensive than a standard PCB, definitely. Uh, but also to really make sure that you get a good and stable signal, we use PCI Express Gen 4 read drivers, and they strengthen the signal signal um, from the CPU to uh, to the the um, PCI Express slot or from yeah. the chipset to the PCI Express or M.2 slot or whatever. Yeah. And besides that, um, I mean, also the switches, you know, but this is only on on the SLI boards. Yeah. If you want to switch from X16 exactly. to X, uh, by, to 8x8. Eight eight. So some boards have those switches yeah. that indeed can switch so you can use two graphics card in it from 16 to 8 8 um, but of course if a motherboard doesn't support sli it doesn't make sense to put expensive pci express gen 4 switches on the motherboard yeah so this is also why the current x470 models they don't use this kind of new type of uh, gen 4 switches and and read drivers but that's also logical and they don't have this this pcb which strengthens the signal yeah. so it's also logical that it doesn't uh, uh, run gen 4 by default uh, like what I said, it's still pending, no decision made, uh, at least not that we know, right? Yep. Um, I also see some people uh, saying, hey, so AMD will get high priced again. Uh, yes, I mean, a lot of people complained always in the past, you know, uh, why make such cheap boards for AMD? Uh, because there's always, always a price gap between Intel and AMD boards. Yeah. Well, now it will get more on the same level. Yeah, so st I think the, the processors, they're really competitive priced. Um, but to have all the latest technology running on it, yeah. you need to put some components on that are slightly more expensive than yeah. what we're used to from the current generation. Yeah. Um, so to really have the, the Gen 4 performance, you need to make certain decisions that cost a little bit more yeah. money than... Yeah. Uh, so uh, how does the redriver work? Uh, basically, it's strengthening the, it's boosting it's a little the signal. Bit, yeah, it's like a signal booster. Yeah. Like you, sometimes you also have that for television, for example, if your signal is not good, you put a booster in between. Yeah. It will strengthen your signal, so um, you don't have that, any. That used to be in the that. past, right? With yeah. antenna. Yeah, exactly. Not anymore. Yeah. Not anymore. So, um, with analog TV. Yeah. yeah. Basically, you know, the, the, the traces have a certain length. Uh, the signal can can go at full speed on the PCB. And from that uh, point on the PCB, you need to strengthen it to go further. Um, otherwise, you know, you lose <laughs> signal strength and you lose, uh, I think... Signal even, quality and that uh, might harm your stability of yeah, your PCI. Yeah, so I don't want to say it will crash, maybe it will go slower, but it's not what you want. And this is actually the situation on X470 compa uh, combined with uh, third gen, oh, sorry, third gen Ryzen yeah. to get... Gen 4 PCI Express. Exactly. Complicated. It many. is complicated. So many generations yeah, and stuff. Yeah, indeed. So, <laughs> so maybe we can go back one slide uh, to show this one once more. Yeah. Uh, so basically what we recommend, uh, uh, use X570 if you want Gen 4 com uh, combined with the third gen uh, Ryzen CPU. Yeah, with X570 and third gen, you're safe. Yeah, you're, you're more than safe go. indeed. Yeah. Um, with X470 and third gen, still unsure. Yeah. With uh, second gen CPU, you will automatically have PCI Express Gen 3. Yeah. And, and this also, uh, yeah, maybe uh, in the next slide, we, yeah. we have some differences on implementation. And this also has to do with the... Uh, yeah, uh, because the example we have here is on a higher end board. So this yeah. one also has the, the switches. Well, maybe show a high end board. Um, so here we have Ace, for example. This one is one of our higher end models. Um, and you can see that, uh, for example, it offers 
the switching with the two PCI Express slots so you can use SLI for example so it can switch from one uh, x16 uh, slot to two x8 slots um, that's not the case for uh, all motherboards um, let me just show you the, here we have the gaming plus this is our entry-level gaming motherboard and here you can see that it only has the x16 uh, slot so you don't have the switches to switch to two times eight. Um, but the second large, so X16 slot is connected to the chipset. Um, and that one offers gen four, but as you can also see, not all slots do. Um, that's different with the ACE, because with the ACE, we use the read drivers for all the slots where they could be applied. So you have all slots on PCI Express gen four. But if we do, would do the same on the gaming plus, that would increase the price of the board tremendously. So, yeah, and and the, the gaming plus on the uh, this one right here, <laughs> uh, the gaming plus. Oh, somebody already said what's left and right. I, I yeah. mean, so uh, gaming this plus is the the black and red motherboard. Yeah, that, that's one of our entry level models. Yeah. So, uh, but and, and this is not only what MSI is doing. Uh, please, I mean, if you are considering to buy a oh look at that, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Somebody was asking for Lucky. Lucky just entered. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so um, if you're considering to buy a, a X570 board with, uh, and especially uh, because you want to use uh, PCI Express Gen 4 for whatever reason, either VJ or storage, um, this is something to take into mind. Uh, and there will be a reasonable price gap uh, between everything implemented on, on uh, Gen 4. Or only uh, certain things. Yeah. So you really have to think about what you want. Do you want to use two GPUs? go to a model that has the the pci express gen 4 switching yeah so for example the ace so you can use sli um if you're only going to use one uh graphics card and one m.2 ssd um and if you want a more cost efficient pc then the gaming plus would be perfectly fine yeah so it, it really differs on what you want because yeah. also ace for example offers pci express gen 4 on all three m.2 slots Gaming Plus has two. It offers Gen 4 on the primary slot. So if you're using one SSD, it does not make any difference. If you're using multiple SSDs, then only the first one will uh, run at full speed. Yeah, so and, and this is going to be quite a nightmare uh, for you all when you choose the main board because this, of course, it's not uh, advertised with on, on the product page or on the box. Uh, so you really have to dig into the technical details of yeah. each model so it i can get a little bit complicated yeah, i hope some media will pay attention to this and then you will find this across all vendors uh who are selling main bots um yeah and sometimes it will be very tricky yeah and this so very carefully look at what do i want with my computer what do i want to use in it and where do i really need high speeds yeah and so based we, on that you can we have a it. question on twitter uh to which i don't have an answer does the msi g65 have good enough thermals for the RTX model. Sorry, I don't know at this moment. Uh, no notebook expert. No. But should be. I mean, uh, I, I please Google for a review. I think there are enough reviews on YouTube, uh, on your favorite media website. We will uh, um, talk about this. Um, let me see. We have a question from Bob. Was the lineup of X570 motherboards shown at Computex always being released? Or will there be more announced always, later this summer? Always more. I mean, always a second wave or something new coming later on. But that's for later. I mean, don't worry about that right now. Yeah. Um, so let's but we already have a lot to show today. Yeah, so let, let's finish about uh, Gen 4 so we can go to the main boards. Um, if you look at Gen 4, basically uh, uh, you can find two things. Uh, you can find VJ cards. Um, and you can Actually find... You something right here. Yeah. And maybe next slide. Oh, yeah, maybe Lucky has to move a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. So you um, you find VJ cars. Uh, so um, AMD announced Navi, the next generation. Yeah. It's called the 5000 series. And this will launch, I don't know what they said, somewhere July, right? They said. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so and these are the first VJ cards, not only based on Navi, but also with uh, PCI Express Gen 4. So this should give you some interesting boost in uh, frames per second. Um, but even more interesting is storage. 
So this is one of the uh, Corsair SSDs, the MP600, uh, Gen 4, uh, which they just announced a few days ago. And more vendors are announcing this. And uh, we have one right here. Let me see the detailed cam. We don't have the Corsair model, but we no. do have a uh, Gen 4 SSD. So as you can see, yeah, it looks... You have to... As you can see, it looks very similar to what you're used to Focus. from a regular M.2 SSD. Um, so it still uses the same M.2 PCI Express interface. Is it? It's, it's, it's not really focused. Did we not put it well. on autofocus? I think we did, but... Anyway. Um, there is a Fison controller on here. Um, yeah. As I thought this was the case for all Gen 4 SSDs at this moment, but I already saw some... Uh, vendors using silicon motion gen 4 controllers yeah. um, but of course in the future there will be many many more different kinds of controllers that will support pci express gen 4 um, so like it it's not a very big change physically but internally it is uh, benchmarks benchmarks i see somebody <laughs> Well, maybe we can show a preview of uh, yeah we, we, we actually show. this is also part of the nda we already we talked show about it yet but not allowed to show any running product but this is what amd announced uh during the actually it's on the product page right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah they didn't deny. actually this i think this was a pity because they showed navi but to really show the strength of of gem 4 go for storage at this point yes i think storage hmm. can at this point can benefit more from gen 4 than graphics cards yeah. in the future that might be different of course yeah but at this point Storage is where it already really makes a difference because um, the latest PCI Express Gen 3 SSDs, they were reaching the limit of what the yeah. interface can offer. Yeah. So if you run a PCI Express Gen 3 SSD, you will have like 3,500, 3,600 megabytes per second, but you cannot get much higher. Because and they have one of the top models. They, yeah. But now you get in a situation that even uh, models that are not really the top models, they can already get pretty close to, yeah, to the, the bottleneck to the bottleneck of the yeah. interface um, so even mid-range SSDs are already really close to that number yeah. especially in read speeds in write it's a little bit different yeah we have some internal benchmarks uh, because yeah, this so was AMD because we set. Did, yeah we did test the gen 4 of course um, because of course AMD will be positive about their product but we tested it and it actually really does reach those speeds so this is like the first wave of uh, Gen 4 SSDs can already achieve over 5,000 megabytes per second. So not megabits per second, but megabytes yeah. per second read from, speed. From 3.6, big step up. Yeah. So from around 3,500, 3,600 to over 5,000. Uh, with the write speeds, they also get over uh, 4,400 already. So that's even higher than their claim, yeah. essentially. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Very nice. And in the future, of course, with newer controllers, we can expect this number to increase even further. I see your question. Um, how are your new micro ATX motherboards? Uh, at this moment, we don't announce any micro ATX. Everything is no. ATX. Or extended ATX. I never got lucky before. Oh. So ATX is the, the smallest form factor we are launching right now. Yeah, indeed. So let's talk a little bit about compatibility. Uh, because this was a big thing before. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's still, <laughs> still a, a big thing. Uh, yeah. So uh, this is a slide uh, AMD put on the website uh, talking about compatibility. So um, you can use your mouse pointer uh, yeah. at, the, at the right Let bottom. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, there it is. There? Yeah. Yeah, I hope everybody can see this. Uh, so basically you have the chipsets on the left side uh, and on the top you have the uh, CPUs. And we're now talking about the third generation Ryzen processor, which is on the far right side. And at the bottom it says no support for A320. I think nobody's surprised with this because A320 is more for system integrators, really entry level. Um, and yeah, it uses AM4 socket, but that's all. You know, it, it's for uh, Athlon, yeah. Exxon X4. Yeah, and of course you can use an older generation Ryzen on it, but especially if you're using a higher core count, Nobody the boards are not really designed for that. So yeah, you you don't pay $300 for a CPU and, and exactly. $50 for a man. It's a weird combination. Yeah, that's true. Indeed. Um, so it doesn't automatically mean that because AMD continu continues with AM4, it doesn't mean that all AM4 CPUs will work perfectly fine on all motherboards. Nope. That was, I think, a little bit of a misunderstanding. Yeah. Um, but uh, AMD made that clear with this um, slide. With this slide to, yeah. to really show. But we have some more details, more specific about MSI. 
And this is no uh, promise from our side. Um, yes, I mean, first, like B350 and X370, that that can work, but it's in certain situations. So um, from our side, we made like a matrix of yeah. what you can expect approximately uh, in between the different series when you want to use the third generation Ryzen. Yeah, so maybe first start with X370 and B350. Uh, uh, they are designed for the first generation uh, of Ryzen. At that moment, the max TDP... So the 1000 series. Yeah, the 1000 series uh, Ryzen. Uh, the TDP was maximum 95 watts. And this also, of yeah. course, I mean, we designed the boards for 95 watts. Oh, they have a little bit uh, overclocking headroom. Um, basically, these can run the... Um, uh, the, the the 8 core, the 6 core, so the 3rd gen 8 core, the 3rd gen 6 core. We don't recommend to run the 12 core. I mean, there will be some exceptions which can run it uh, without problem. It depends, of course, if you have a higher end X370 board that will, that might work. Yes. A low, lower end B350 board, that's a different story. So yes. it really depends on what board from those uh, yeah. generations. It's all common sense because, like what I said, you don't uh, buy a $300 or $400 CPU which you put on a, a yeah. budget board. Um, and for this platform, avoid overclocking. I mean, uh, um, the especially 12 core, uh, it's... it's uh, on a high-end X370, a 6 core, of course, you can. that's no problem. Sure. Yeah. Um, but especially if you're going for a high core count and yeah. if, if you're using a lower-end board, that's already a little bit of a tricky combination. If you want to overclock and just... No, don't do it. Yeah, it's. Uh, so if we then are going to uh, look at X4 of uh, X470 and B450, the current generation, yeah. they're designed for the Ryzen uh, 2000 series, the yeah. second generation Zen Plus, basically mm -hmm. 12 so nanometer. For example, 2700X already has yeah. 105 TDP. Um, yeah, so they are designed for 105 TDP, and basically everything works. But you need to pay attention. You need to make sure you have good cooling. Yeah. So what is good cooling? That's in different areas yeah. because... Uh, a lot of people think, oh, I have a big CPU cooler, it's fixed. Yeah, but you can have a very big all-in-one water cooling that will not cool um, the, the VRM of no. your motherboard. And that's very important because if you have a lower-end uh, B450 motherboard, for example, the VRM cooling will be more limited than when you have a high-end X470 model. Yeah. Um, so especially if the VRM cooling is limited on more entry-level motherboards, um, then you need proper airflow on your VRM. So if you're using a very big all-in-one water cooling on a lower end board, your VRM will not get cooled enough to uh, to run a 12 core, for example. Yeah. And again, this depends per model, this depends per yeah. CPU. So uh, at this moment, we're still testing everything. And, and by the time uh, Ryzen 2 Gen is launched, which is uh, beginning of July. Um, of course, if you're using a higher end model with a big VRM and extended heatsink cooling, etc., no problem. Then it will be fine. Yeah. Uh, but if you're using a lower end motherboard with limited VRM cooling, um, make sure you improve the cooling. So if you're using water cooling, make sure to have additional airflow on your VRM, um, or even consider uh, placing a heatsink yourself yeah. to uh, yeah. small heatsinks will yeah. help. And that, that's also actually what you see at the bottom right. Yeah. Uh, there we have a mainboard. Some mainboards, they have uh, uh, only cooling on half of the VRM. And uh, normally it's no problem. I mean, with, with the CPUs they're designed for. But yeah. now, for example, if you use an X370 and it has this kind of cooling, it might give some problems. And these are the parts you need to cool very good. And what Mike said, this maybe also can apply a small heatsink. Uh, so for, for current gen, what they're designed for, no problem at all. But if you're going to push a 12 core yeah. on this, you will get in problems. And of course, if you have an X470 model that is designed for overclocking, yeah. you will not have a problem with running a 12 core. Nope. No, and no you can at all. overclock really well. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can. <laughs> well, we cannot talk about this, but yes. Um, but uh, yeah, that's of course different if you have a lower end board. So also overclocking, if you want to overclock a 6 core, that will be a lot easier than overclocking a 12 core. So if you want to overclock high core count CPU, um, only do that on higher end boards. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And I think uh, people with uh, MSI B450 and, and X470 in general don't have to worry so much. Uh, because if you look, there's a, a website. Which website is this? Uh, 
uh, this hardware unboxed. Yeah, so they did, a, they did a YouTube video and there are more tests like this online. Uh, and the general testing, generally testing the VRMs mm -hmm. in uh, certain settings uh, to look how hot they get. And uh, yeah, MSI scored very well. And yeah, so the, here they tested B450 models. Well, in the, so. the video there are more models. Yeah, yeah, but and they have more uh, tests. Example. Yeah. yeah. So and I found on Reddit, <laughs> uh, I found a list of some people. Uh, they are um, uh, rating all the boards uh, from these kind of reviews. And in that overview, MSI came out also very positive. You see a lot of uh, MSI models on the right side. Uh, so, so on Reddit, they make like a, a subdivision and they divide it in different tiers. Yes. So you have yes. top tier VRM, you have high end tier VRM, you have mid range tier VRM yeah. and lower end v, uh, tier VRM. And, and you have VRM that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's like, I, I cut it off. I mean, no need to show that. Uh, you can find this li list yourself on Reddit. Yeah. And there you can also see if you have one of the motherboards that are in the top tier or higher end ranges. Um, then of course you will not have a problem running a 12 core. Mid-range also not. I mean, this is all... Um, on stock speeds, no problem. No. If you want to overclock then, uh, especially with the 12 core, then you need a better VR. Yeah. So maybe let's go to the first motherboard and I will do a lucky of a... Yeah, I will do a lucky, a lucky draw. draw. Yeah. So we have... Does go Lucky maybe, need to help you? No, no, draw? no. <laughs> yeah, then I can put it like this. So the first motherboard, if you were watching the stream last week, we already teased this motherboard, the MPG X570 Gaming Plus. So in the meanwhile, Eric will uh, draw a winner. If you still want to participate, go to amazon.com slash two slash insider. Eric will also post a link in chat. Um, the more actions you perform, the bigger chance you will have to win. Um, but back to the motherboard, let me just grab the X570 Gaming Plus. So this is our entry level gaming model. Um, that doesn't mean there won't be any models positioned below this one, um, but they're not gaming models. Um, this one, it has the iconic black and red uh, gaming colors that you know from the past already, because that's something we've done for a couple of generations. Uh, and that's also because- Let's retire lucky. <laughs> let's make a little bit of space. Um, nowadays, many higher end boards, they have RGB lighting and RGB lighting doesn't really work well with a lot of colors in your board. You want a very neutral board. This is our entry-level X570 motherboard, so it doesn't have uh, RGB lighting on the board yet. So here we stick to our black and red gaming colors. Um, and the first thing you will notice with this board is... The fan. The fan. Yeah. Uh, before we talk about that, so <laughs> uh, if you uh, want to participate in the giveaway, please go to msi.com slash to slash insider. I posted the... Uh, yeah, Lucky's gone. I posted a link in the chat, alternative link. You can also uh, join. Um, and do we the, have a winner? Yeah, the Jonathan Hartfield. Congratulations. In Congratulations, the, Jonathan. Probably on Friday or maybe early next week due to uh, some holidays. Uh, we will send you the... Um, the US dollar Steam code. Steam code. I'm always thinking. Steam wallet code. It's Steam wallet code. It's not yeah. a game code. It's a Steam wallet code. Anyway, yeah. you can... So you can decide yourself what you want to buy. Yeah, a lot of nice games over there. Or uh, I think you can also use it for in-game stuff for yeah, even benchmarking yeah, tools yeah. are on Steam nowadays. Absolutely. So maybe talk about this fan because yeah, a lot fan. of people Let are like, oh my God. Um, that's this one. The fan. Maybe mm, mm, do like this. That was a big talking point on the internet. So we saw many comments on this. Yes. Yes. And I already uh, said last live stream, we're sorry. Uh, cannot avoid the fan. No, it's it's necessary. Yeah, you need to have the fan to uh, guarantee the best and stable performance. Uh, stable performance, basically, because this yeah. all has to do. I mean, we talked about the Gen 4 price, the cost price, mm -hmm. uh, more switches, uh, higher end PCB, but also the 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 X570 chipset. We tend to talk about PCH, right? But it's chipset. That, yeah. AMD Intel still calls is PCH. It yeah. AMD is chipset. But set. In the case like two, Northbridge, Southbridge, but it's only one. It used to be Northbridge yeah. and Southbridge. Nowadays, it's X570. Yeah, so um, it's get, it gets really hot. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, we, and, and there are a lot of speculation on the internet. Is it because of Gen 4? Is it because of RAID implementation? Um, actually, even if you don't use Gen 4, it gets hot. And that's why you need a fan. I, I know there are some boards... Um, yeah, maybe maybe switch uh, back to. And can you click the chat back open? <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I will do. 
Um, uh, maybe show the next slide. Yeah. So what we did on uh, our motherboards is we. Uh, let me see. There we have chat again. Yeah. So we incorporated the Frozer heatsink, and that's it. that is essentially a heatsink with a fan on there. And we didn't just pick a standard fan. Let me see. There we go. We yeah. we have a 45 millimeter, so it's pretty big for a chipset fan. Like in the very past, there were also chipset fans on motherboards. I but saw they a, were lot of, a lot smaller. I saw a lot of fenders. They still have 300 millimeter fan. Yeah, and those are the ones that they make a lot of noise. <laughs> Because they have to spin a lot faster yeah. to uh, get the same cooling performance. Yeah. So we have quite a big fan for a chipset. So yes. 45 millimeters. And what we also did is that we incorporated the technology from uh, our twin frozen graphics cards. Yeah, we went to a VGA department. I mean, they're yeah. the experts, right? Yeah, they, they have a lot of experience with twin active frozen, cooling. Yeah. Gaming cards. Exactly. And on our uh, twin frozen 4 and twin frozen 4 advanced um, cooling solutions, we introduced the propeller blade fans, yes. and that's what we also are using now for our motherboards. Because we think this is perfectly suitable design for motherboards as well. And this is a very small detail, it has to do with the curves over here, uh, on the f end of the fan blades. Uh, but basically it increases yeah. the, uh, the, the air intake. Yeah, so better thermal performance, but also durability. Because that was, I read on the internet, for many people that's a big concern. Yes. They were afraid that the fan would break before they would stop using yeah, I the I think you, you cannot uh, compare these fans like the fans of 9083 or whatever year you, no. you had fans on main bars because um, the, the, the fan is um, not only larger, but also the, the inside of the fan, mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, the inside, the heart of the fan, it, it's much smaller. Yeah, so the so fan blades are much bigger. Rotation uh, speed is much lower. Exactly. So, um, I mean, will it always be silent? No, for sure not. I mean, uh, but we it's tried... It's of course dependent on usage, how yeah. silent it will be. Yeah. Um, but we, we did a lot of things to prevent that. Not only the fan technology, the, the big fan, but also... But uh, also for durability, it also uses double ball bearings, for example. Yeah, indeed. So that's also something we're using on our higher end graphics cards to uh, ensure durability for the fan. Yeah. And another thing that will also increase durability is that the fan will not spin all the time. Indeed. It uses zero frozen technology, which you might also already know from our graphics cards and this means that the fan will only start spinning if uh, if it requires active cooling so if the temperature allows it the fan will stop spinning so it will be completely passively cooled um, if the chipset hits 63 degrees celsius then the fan will start spinning but so this means actually it gets quite hot yeah yeah it's a bit um, it's like a, of like course a, like on a GPU. It's not that hot. No, true, <laughs> true. Um, but for a chipset, um, the TDP of this chipset is between 11 and 15 watts. Yeah. For example, X470, the current generation, I think it's 5.8 watts of yeah, power usage. Yeah, let's say 6 watts. Yeah, 6 watts approximately. Yeah. So it doubles. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that's a very big difference. More than doubles. More than doubles yeah. in some situations, yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, for everybody the same, and you get Gen 4, so uh, quite a lot of speed. Yeah. Um, and, and, yeah, we have uh, uh, different uh, fan profiles. So uh, you can have a, a, a boost fan profile. To I make mean, sure it's always very cool. Yeah. I mean, if you care about cooling in your case, but I think nobody cares. If you don't this. care about noise and only care about cooling, then yeah. the boost profile. Uh, balanced, and that's the default profile. And then silent, uh, it will get a little bit more hot. Also, I mean, if you have a uh, good airflow in your case, you can select this. I mean, it's extra silent. Yeah. Um, and the fan will not always run because it will only start, I think, like like 55 degrees or something like that. It will, uh, um, like, uh, start spinning. Not really start spinning, you know. It will start spinning at, at uh, 63 yeah. very slowly. But it will, how do you say that, ramp up the speed slowly. Yeah. Um, so in the beginning, if it's not too hot, then it will be um, on a low RPM. So yes. it will still be very silent. Um, but of course, if the airflow in your case is not very good, the chipset will get warmer and it needs to spin faster. So it also really depends on the airflow in your case um how fast it will spin and how silent it will be um <laughs> somebody fell with his head on a keyboard as is a good 
<laughs> <laughs> that's no question. Yeah, so that's uh, our frother heatsink. Yeah. And this is incorporated on all our motherboards, so also the higher end. We saw that there were some motherboards released that do not have a fan. Our engineer was laughing when he saw yeah, that. Yeah, we uh, don't think that's a good idea. No. Because if you have a fan that is present there, even if it doesn't spin, if it's necessary to spin, it will spin. If you don't have the fan and it's necessary to spin, then it will overheat. Yeah, so you will absolutely. Get thermal throttling, stuff like that. So you will essentially lose performance. Yeah. And that's something you don't want. Or so, crashes. Yeah. So if you have very good cooling, the fan will uh, stop spinning anyway. Only, yeah. It, it will only start when it really, it really needs to be started. Yeah. I mean, we wanted to um, uh, have the fan here running that you can hear it. First of all, it's very difficult to hear with a microphone, etc., on the live stream, but it's not allowed by AMD. I mean, it's allowed to, to let you hear the fan, but it's not allowed to boot a mainboard basically at this uh, uh, time. So we cannot show a running X570 mainboard during the live stream. Uh, Mike Bruce is asking, so even without zero frother, it's not noisy. That the sound depends on the airflow in your case as well. Yeah. So if you have really good airflow in your case, then the chipset will be cooler already. And then it will be more silent than when you have a case that runs very hot inside because then of course the chipset will run warmer and the fan needs to spin faster yeah. which will give you more noise and at this moment it's too early to tell you know how many percent of the time it will run because it really depends on the load and there are not really a lot of gen 4 devices on the market yeah. and you know in the future future it, will tell yeah this can but we're not worried at all this is dependent on so many different yeah. factors like if you're running uh a high end motherboard with a lot of SSDs, yeah. multiple graphics cards, then of course you put more load on your chipset yeah. than... For me, it's basically very simple. Everybody needs a fan. So we made the best uh, uh, case of it. I mean, we have a we uh, core fresher technology. Yeah. Uh, we have a zero fresher technology. We have a VJ department. So we included all the knowledge into this. Yeah. Don't worry about it. But I mean, there are more features on this mainboard, right? Definitely. Um, Let's jump to them because this is... You're a little bit slow on the yeah, slides yeah. today. There we are. And you're slow in the cab. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I have to wait for you. Right? And now you have the wrong one because I want to show something up okay, close. Okay, okay, okay. Because this okay. is really cool about this motherboard. Let me show the front. So oh, this is... Did you break it? No. <laughs> That's your job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good at my job. Exactly. <laughs> so here we have a cutout in a PCB. This is what we call atypical PCB uh, design. And this cutout will give you easier access to the SATA ports and the USB 3 header. So this is for easy cable management. Um, and also on this board, this is uh, included in the box actually. It's the Ender 2 Shield Frozer. Yeah. Um, so this one is, uh, for this model, it's only present for the primary slot. So that's the PCI Express Gen 4 slot. Can you maybe check where the focus is? Because it's really... Somewhere here, I guess. Let me check if the webcam settings reset it. I might be able to fix that. Um, because sometimes... Yeah, here things go wrong. Yeah, sometimes this resets. Yeah, yeah there we go. Try now. Wow. That's better, huh? Yeah, <laughs> way better. We might have unplugged it, and if we replug it, then it out of focus is removed. So we have the, the M.2 uh, shield and this will... It's, it's an additional shield, it's in yeah. the box and then, uh, I mean, we didn't uh, uh, put it on very well. Um, but yeah, there's, there's, there's no SSD inside. Yeah, usually there is a, an SSD underneath. Um, right now there is not, so usually you would not install it. Yeah. Um, and this will both cool and protect your SSD. I like this this part as well. Um, it's the, the, the name of the product and it gives uh, uh, light. Yeah, maybe we can show the back. There you can see the LEDs around it. And they will illuminate the Gaming Plus logo there. Yeah. So this is not RGB, so it will be illuminated red, but still a nice effect. Um, then some major talking points about X570 and that's the VRM. Yeah. Uh, we, we already talked about VRM, it's very important, especially yeah. for uh, uh, AMD CPUs. Mm -hmm. And these boards were designed with 
the third generation Ryzen in mind. Yeah. So we already uh, made sure that this VRM is ready for a lot of cores, that it has decent cooling on all power phases. Also, you can see it has both uh, an eight pin and a four pin power connector. Um, if your power supply only has an eight pin, for example, don't worry, you can use it with one power connector. But for example, if you want to do overclocking um, by using multiple inputs, you can also uh, get the heat a bit lower per connector. So you will essentially spread out the heat over two connectors. Um, yeah, there, maybe we can show the I.O. because we have some cool so stuff. So maybe because somebody is talking about uh, no Yudo 2. Well, I think, yeah, no. I mean, Yudo 2. I think Yudo 2, yeah, yeah, yeah it's kind of dead. It's enterprise. It, yeah, it, it, it's it, not for this segment. No, it's enterprise. You will find it on server boards. Uh, you probably maybe will. prosumer boards, the high desktop platform, yeah. you sometimes see it. Yeah. I, I believe it already from the beginning, I mean, yeah. it was all enterprise. In the Intel had some SSDs. Exactly. The, like for gamers, they tend to use M.2 SSDs. Yeah, more so and more. It, way more than, than U.2. So yeah. there is no point using PCI Express lanes for something that people will not use. No. Um, now we can show the I.O. because what we also have on this motherboard is our BIOS, uh, flash BIOS button. Yeah. Um, well, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and if you put in um, a USB drive, um, with the right BIOS file, um, you only need to install your power connector and you can flash your BIOS directly from your USB drive to your motherboard. And this is one of our most entry level boards, which already has that, right? Yeah, exactly. So you will, don't have to install a CPU, you yeah. don't have to install memory, you don't have to install a graphics card, only USB drive, power connector, and you're good to go. Yeah. So this board, because somebody was already talking about M.2, has two uh, M.2 slots, uh, one at the bottom, uh, one over here, uh, mm -hmm. one you get an additional uh, cover in the uh, box, so you have a heat spreader on there. Uh, also, the VRM is cooled with uh, extended heatsink. Yeah. We can show that as yeah, well. Yeah, if you show it on top. There you can see that it has a lot more surface, and the surface area will help to transfer the heat. Um, so it's easier to dissipate the heat from the VRM, um, so it will give you better performance. Yeah, uh, yeah sorry. Like this yeah and it has VR uh, big heat sinks on all power faces so everything yeah, th this cool uses also it. IR design uh, this is all digital yeah. uh, VRM design exactly so it has a digital PWM controller yeah um, and the design is completely digital yeah so indeed, for indeed. the best performance there as well yeah anything else regarding this board yeah we also have on the PCI Express slot the primary one we have steel armor reinforcement oh, yeah so, uh, so hmm, that's very that's like difficult the, the, to show. The metal yeah, casing. Hard. Yeah, exactly. The metal casing around the PCI Express slot, and that will allow it's you... this time around. That's yeah, why it's, it's of, difficult it's, to it's see. It's like gunmetal grayish. That's very good. I mean... It looks cool. Yeah. No, yeah, well, I mean, it's hidden now, but it looks cool. It's harder to see, but, yeah. but still, it, it looks uh, pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but especially if you're using... Um, a modern graphics card, they tend to get bigger and bigger with huge uh, three fan cooling solutions. Um, and like, it's fine if your PC standing in one place, but if you go to gaming events and drag your PC around, um, you don't want to, your, to have your slot broken off your motherboard. So that's why we have steel armor to make sure that it doesn't happen. Next. So that was a gaming plus. Yeah, so. Are you excited for the next one? Yeah, I, yeah, I know <laughs> what's coming. So I will put it here, right? Yeah, let's just work from this side to that side. So I have the next board right here. And I will also have the right slide there. Yeah. The MPG X570 Gaming Edge Wi-Fi. So the no, name I'm already gives it away, Wi-Fi. Oh, I thought X570. Yeah, that also. <laughs> um, so this is uh, a little bit higher tier motherboard than the Gaming Plus. Yes. So we have uh, some more features incorporated on this. As you can see, this is a more neutral color tone. So it's a completely black with some gray accents. Hey, L Lucky wants to uh, hand Godlike to Eric. <laughs> I'm not sure if Lucky is strong enough to pick the Godlike <laughs> up because the Godlike is heavy. Yeah, that's it's, it. It's really heavy. Um, so the Gaming Plus, it is uh, very neutral in color. So no red accents here. 
And that's because it also incorporates uh, Mystic Light RGB on the back of the motherboard, so it will glow inside your case. Um, and RGB doesn't go well with uh, red accents on your motherboard. It would only work well if you put it to red, but of course, if you want to do rainbows, etc., go full unicorn, then you want to have a neutral looking motherboard. I have a question. Um Ijsklont is asking how well uh, would the included M.2 shield perform on a, a Gen 4 M.2 drive? Uh, because other uh, vendors already include their uh, a cooling on the uh, Gen 2 M.2 device. And well, I think this is uh, something you see more and more. Uh, because the, the, the faster um, M.2 uh, devices, and this is, uh, we have here one is Gen 4, yeah. uh, the faster they are, uh, the more heat they create. So you need to cool it because if they get hot, they will throttle. And throttling basically means it, it uh, takes back the speed. Yeah, your performance will drop, so you lose the benefit of having PCI yeah. versus Gen 4. Yeah, your performance will drop basically means your transfer rate of the files or your loading times uh, will uh, increase. Yeah. Um, and, and that's why we started with this uh, uh, twin frother, uh, of M.2 frother cooling. Uh, But now you see a lot of vendors, Intel, I believe, uh, Corsair, um, for sure there are more, which already by default include this. Yeah. Um, so what's the difference between the onboard one? We didn't test it yet. Uh, I mean, we did the, uh, we did some testing on the onboard one. We are not allowed to show it, uh, but um, we don't know how they compare with the ones uh, provided by the vendors. So that's something for later. Maybe yeah, no, well, it also differs per model because you can see a lot of different heat sinks. There are a really lot of different situations indeed. I mean, and um, some are really there for cooling, and others are only there because they have RGB, for example, on the M.2. Yeah, yeah, indeed, it should be a really good uh, uh, cool block to cool it. I mean, some just have it there to. to yeah. I mean, we saw one with LEDs, uh, M.2 uh, M.2 uh, uh, device with uh, LEDs. It will just get more, generate more heat. I think it's a better solution to uh, use the heatsink on the motherboard where you have RGB incorporated on the heatsink. Mm -hmm. Also because you will have a larger surface area. Yeah. Maybe we can show it on the close-up, also on this board. If you have a heatsink on your SSD, it will only cool um, the few chips on top. But here, it will spread out the heat all over the heatsink. So this is all metal. So if you have a larger surface area, it's easier to dissipate the heat from the SSD. Yeah. Yeah. So completely metal there. Yeah. So yeah, I think it, of course it depends per motherboard how um, extensive the the cooling is on the on the SSDs. Um, if you have a larger surface area, it will dissipate more heat. Um, and especially some of the SSDs that come with the heatsink nowadays. Some have really decent heatsinks. Some are just really, really small, thin blocks. And then I doubt if it really, really helps. Yeah. So this board comes actually with uh, two slots. Here you have one M.2 slot. Here you have one M.2 slot. Um, and this one is with the M.2 frosser uh, yeah. cooled. Uh, so you can easily remove the two screws and uh, put it on there. Um, interesting. This one also has... Uh, let me see. <laughs> Wi-Fi. And I see another big thing compared to the previous one. Shield. It's an integrated IO shield. So yeah. now I always, I'm always struggling with IO shields. I always tend to lose them. I've had so many motherboards. I think you dropped this one. Or I haven't set it together again properly. <laughs> oh yeah, this is one we took apart. <laughs> Probably. Um, so it's integrated already on the motherboard itself. So um, you don't have to be afraid that uh, you lose it or what also happens sometimes that you already install the motherboard in the case and then you find out that you forgot to place IO shield. That's always a struggle. Yeah, here you also see the, um, the heatsink. Yeah, very large extended heatsink cooling. Yeah. Um, and as you mentioned already, Wi-Fi. And um, on this specific motherboard, is Wi-Fi 5 and that might not sound familiar yet because people okay. Wi-Fi 5 Wi-Fi 5 yeah <laughs> so you had Wi-Fi N then you had Wi-Fi AC oh uh, yeah yeah and I know AC then we're going towards AX but uh, okay. they switched the naming rule 
So we still have those standards, but now they're called Wi-Fi 4, Wi-Fi ah. 5, Wi-Fi 6. So I knew already. <laughs> now everyone knows. Yeah. So Wi-Fi 5 is essentially Wi-Fi AC. So it's just a different name for the same thing. Yeah. Antenna included? Yeah, antenna included. Let me see if I have it right here. Still in the back. That was actually the cue yeah, like showed antenna mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> small hint. I need to unpack the antenna still. Oh, small hint, big antenna. Houston, did, we have a problem. Did you just drop your water almost e over the keyboard? Yeah, a little bit. Ooh, but nobody, know. nobody will see that. That was a close call. Um, <laughs> not sure how this is going to dry. So let me put this mm. together. How do you mean close call? It's swimming. <laughs> but luckily it's underneath and not over the keyboard, yeah. right? And nobody will see it. Okay. So antenna, large antenna for good reception. You'll have two connectors and those will be connected to two connectors on the IO. Yeah. So it is um, Intel Wireless AC or Wi-Fi 5 as it's called now. Yeah. It uh, also supports uh, dual band, so both 2.4 gigahertz and 5 But it's one of the entry level boards, right? It's uh, Gaming Plus, then you yeah. have uh, Edge. Exactly. So Gaming Plus doesn't have Wi-Fi uh, on the motherboard already. Uh, this one also has uh, one. RGB, right? Yeah, on can the back show? of the motherboard. Yeah, we can show the LEDs on the rear side. Oh, I don't think we can sh show them working. I don't think this one has... Oh, okay, 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 yeah. We can show where the LEDs are. That side. So yeah. here on top. You get a nice glow between the case and your main exactly. board. Exactly. Um, and of course you will have headers to um, add additional RGB components to your setup. More questions? Bring the big boys. Yeah, I think this one we talked about. Yeah, this one also gets dynamic audio, uh, 3D audio. Yeah. Um, I think people are really excited for the higher tier models. <laughs> Next. <laughs> but I think the Edge is a really nice board. It looks really cool. Yeah, it's so a nice uh, feature set. if you click on the next one, yeah. then right. I'm going to draw another uh, winner. And I will oh, just start me. I will just start teasing this motherboard a little, little bit. Yeah, well, you so can already see it on the back. Maybe you can talk <laughs> about the giveaway as well. Yeah. Uh, if you have participated in the giveaway yet, uh, go to msi.com slash two slash insider. There you can perform a couple of actions. The more actions you perform, the bigger chance you will have to win one of the 20 US dollars team wallet codes. Um, Eric will also post uh, the link in chat in case you cannot see it. Um, and then we will have our next winner. I will post an other link in the chat. It's a, it's a direct link. And... <laughs> good, eh? Yeah, it's good. Yeah. So, um, the winner uh, of the uh, $20 team voucher is uh, Wong Shang Yun. Uh, I hope Did I you hope pronounce that correctly. Yeah, should be close. Yeah. <laughs> close Congratulations. Enough. Anyway, uh, otherwise you will see uh, the game code end of this week, beginning this uh, next week. Uh, Steam voucher code in your mailbox. Uh, if you want to participate, go to amazoncom slash two slash insider or in the chat uh, join the of a uh, yeah click on the direct link. So now we go to one of the series that for many people is their favorite. Uh, yep. motherboard series within MSI the gaming pro carbon so we've had this for many generations already many yeah. different chipsets very popular model very popular model it's I think gaming pro carbon is that like that sweet spot between price and features it's yeah uh, I mean it's it's still affordable it's uh, still and affordable. you still get a lot of good features exactly. it incorporates a lot of features from the higher end models as well um, so let me just show it up close so the uh, Gaming Edge that we just show you, showed you already had Mystic Light RGB uh, on the back. This one also has it all the, over the complete length of the motherboard. Mm -hmm. um, but this, this one, one also you can has show or not? Let me see if it has the header. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, one. Yep. This one. Ooh, can show. Live demo. <laughs> uh, Mike Drews is to the toilet. He will come back for MEG. There we go. So here you can see them on the back. Yeah, so maybe if we show it like this uh, with... I think it's too bright in here to really see the glow. I can fix that for uh oh <laughs> This is normally where we... Yeah. 
ya focus has a problem with this maybe uh, enable one light whoa, whoa. <laughs> and that's the, the wrong light anyway yeah Let me put the lights back on yeah. okay so here we have um, the mystic light over the full length of the motherboard but also here on top of the uh, the io shroud so it offers a little bit more rgb um, but there is more to this motherboard because it also has a slightly bigger vrm than um yeah so this is a uh, 10 plus 2 plus 1 right yeah so 10 phases so the other one were 8 plus 2 plus 1 yes. this is 10 plus 2 plus 1 um, yeah. phase uh, vrm also completely digital of course like all the x570 motherboards and um especially if you all want the msi x570 boards like all not, our not <laughs> not all boards on the market are digital. No, okay all our x570 uh, 570 motherboards yeah. um so also if you want to uh, do overclocking on really high tier uh, cpus with a Don't high core count too much about overclocking nda <laughs> <laughs> yeah but this is prepared for uh, yeah kicking for higher workloads <laughs> kicking <Yeah. ass. laughs> exactly yeah um, so you also see uh, two m.2 slots uh, and both I have will not mention any cooler. frequencies or something no okay <laughs> good i just say prepared for overclocking yeah so two M.2 slots, uh, both with a uh, heatsink cover. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's very difficult to see, but you see, I mean, hmm, yeah, you see, even it is like a double edged. No, you cannot say double edged. How do you call this? You see this? Really nice detail. Yeah, and that's also to increase the surface area. Oh, we can we can remove it for better cooling. Yeah, we can remove it. Yeah. You, you want, want me to do it? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Eric already broke quite a few samples. <coughs> um, but also, yeah, we have it the wrong way around. But here it has two. So ah, there you have the. This is the cooling part. And you see there are, uh, some fins on it to increase the uh, surface from the sides. Let me take the other one off as well, because this is why it's such a benefit to have this incorporated in your motherboard. And here you have a thermal pad. What if I put this on your forehead? It will stick probably. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the other one. Yeah. And as you can see, it's it's big. So it gives you a lot of surface area to cool your SSD with. Yeah. And it's not balanced. <laughs> so here they are. Now the motherboard looks a lot more naked if you see it from the front. Yeah, <laughs> if it indeed, loses indeed. its shield. So let me just put this back together again. Uh oh. Um, so uh, this one has uh, Intel Gigabit LAN, right? Yeah. An AMD board with Intel Gigabit LAN. Exactly. Mm, interesting. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, you will have it's good, still... good uh, performance. How did you take this off? That's for the top. Or not? There no. we go. No, I have it. It's like a puzzle. I had the right one. Puzzle it back together. Yeah, so uh, Intel Gigabit LAN, uh, but what I find interesting, this is called comes with Wi-Fi 6. Yeah. So, so what is Wi-Fi 6? Do you still remember? Wi-Fi 6 is what was previously known as Wi-Fi AX. I think it's still called AX, but yeah, I... No, I, it's not called AX anymore. They really... So nobody's going to mention AX? Then, then they're still using the old name. Yeah, but, that's but what I'm saying. Of course, people will still yeah. be using AX, but the official name now is Wi-Fi 6. Um, but it's technically it's the same thing. Somebody's saying you look nuts. Nuts. I look nuts. I no, the board. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Every time Hugh grabs the board, I panic. Oh, it's fine. I don't hey, kill yeah. them. That's Eric. Hey, same. Same. Yeah. Here. <laughs> uh, there. So there you have the, the antenna connectors. So the Wi-Fi AX is also from Intel. Wi-Fi six. Or what? Wi-Fi six. Yeah. No, I, I said it wrong. <laughs> Um, so both the the wired LAN and the wireless are both Intel on an AMD board. Um, yeah, so maybe maybe Wi-Fi. I mean Wi-Fi six. What is the benefit of Wi-Fi five? That's actually quite a lot because with Wi-Fi six you will have um, better transfer speeds, much higher. So 
approximately three times higher than with uh, Wi-Fi 5 or Wi-Fi yeah. AC. Also has to do with security? Also better data security, but also lower latency. And that's very yeah. important if you, for example, want to game on a wireless connection. Um, and more and more people are doing this, right? Gaming on a wireless connection. Yeah, definitely. Um, more and more people. I'm, don't I'm still a wired guy. Me too, because when I started living where I live now, the first thing I did was drain all the cables. <laughs> wait, wait, yeah. Um, they but have nowadays, to use them. Yeah, exactly. But nowadays, many people, they just use a mesh network, for example, which is also yeah. very popular nowadays. Um, they don't want all the hassle with cables. They want to have it clean. And um, yeah, then, then Wi-Fi um, definitely becomes more and more viable for gaming as well. Yeah, you will see a lot of uh, uh, Wi-Fi 6 solutions coming out, yep. uh, routers, um, uh, mesh uh, solutions. Definitely. Uh, yeah. So it's going to be very big and this will be on, on this. And so Not only a lot of boards, also mobile phones um, yeah. will transfer to, to Wi-Fi 6 as well. Uh, it will also be the standard there. Yeah. I see somebody talking about um, uh, Mystic Light. Uh, maybe something I can highlight for all the boards. Uh, in, the, in the past we had a lot of applications. So we had um, for? We, we, for everything we had like... Uh, Mystic oh, Light, yeah. we had uh, Command Center, we had uh, hardware, monitor. Uh, hardware Monitor, we have Live Update, we have, I don't know, like 12 They're applications. All separate utilities. Yeah, yeah, all separate. So what we did this year, we are uh, including them all in one application. And then you can very easy uh, install uh, the items you want or deinstall uh, you don't use. Everything from one application. Mystic Light will also be there. And with Mystic Light, <coughs> you can... Uh, select different co profiles, you can sync it. You can also sync it with games. I wanted to say something, I'm not sure if it's announced. The new game. Where was the NDA? I'm not sure. <laughs> anyway, you heard it can first. Um, <laughs> here? Uh, yeah, come on. I mean, they're all friends. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So, um, with uh, Philips Huey and with Nanoleaf, we're already support and with Mystic Light, we're already supporting uh, Assassin's Creed uh, Odyssey. Uh, indeed, uh, Ambient Link. Uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, so if you play the game, you look at the sky, you see everything, everything will turn blue in your room. Yeah. If you look at the grass... If you want to have a preview of that, we did a Mystic Light live stream where we also demonstrated the Ambient Link. Yes. So everything around us was we, we will synchronized link that later. with... Yeah. yeah. And now... The Division 2. Yeah. Again. So, uh, so more really games will be supported with the Ambient Link. So. Yeah. Uh, we are building the ecosystem, and Division 2 is a really popular game. Jake. I'm already... Addicted to it? Yeah. How, it's, many, it's... how many hours did you put in oh, this I so don't far? know. Not, not as many as Battlefield. That's impossible so to still... put in as many as Battlefield. That's, that's also You would correct. need, like, a whole new life to, start yeah, yeah, <laughs> to yeah, get yeah, that yeah. many hours. Ne next week, new map. So how many do you have in Battlefield now? Like, nah, let's not talk about that. Like, not just the latest one, but combined? 5k hours? Oh, man. Actually, I calculated this in... in, in in like days and years scary shit <laughs> <laughs> really anyway let's uh, uh, talk about this uh, motherboard so that's the application uh, with x570 we'll all also launch the new game center dragon center a uh, dragon center we dragon call the dragon center yeah good name yeah um yeah i think that's it for the, this board right nah, something more because we already saw steel armor here we have on both slots steel oh, yeah. armor. Yeah. Yeah, but it's very difficult to see. Yeah, it's it's hard to see. Integrated I.O. as well. Yeah. yeah, from now on, all the boards we will show will have the integrated I.O. Yeah, so I think this will also, again, be a very popular model as we're used to from pretty much all uh, Game Pro Carbon series. So let me unplug this so we can continue to the next motherboard. Can I give this to you? Yeah, just put it there a moment. I'm already preparing uh, another giveaway. I did a lucky draw. Um. So Eric also dropped the link in chat again. If you haven't participated yet, go to msi.com slash two slash insider. Make sure to perform as many actions as possible so you have a bigger chance to win. And I'll just the, the next, next winner, and I hope I pronounced correctly, is Mi Michael Morfiadakis. I know from which country. But anyway, congratulations. congratulations. You'll get an email in the coming days with a Steam uh, voucher. Um, I, yeah, go to msi.com. Oh, let this put this uh, 
So you can go to msi.com slash two slash insiders or you can uh, click on the chat, uh, link I put in the chat. So next board. Next board. And this one for people who watched last week are already familiar with this one. This is the MEGX 570 ACE. And we already had an ACE model in our Z390 series and there it was like the, the little brother of the godlike essentially so yeah. it had the same look and feel that uh, the godlike had we did that a little bit different for uh, for x570 so the ace now really has its own identity it got a very nice black and gold let me show it up front it's black with golden accents so this is the, so the look you and feel did you might the cleaning air yeah i just picked it up and i think i hit it no, there with my fat i think finger. you are already complaining I with cleaning yeah, but now when I picked it up, I hit it again. So I think my ha God. half of my cheeseburger so is now... <laughs> not only that, everybody has your fingerprint right now. Oh, that's true. I have to be careful now. No. <laughs> so the black and gold, you might already be familiar with. Yeah, the cable. Uh, yeah, let's power the lighting on. So you might be familiar with the black with the uh, golden accents. Because that's something we're also using on our top tier. Um, the, the very thin gaming notebooks. Uh, the GS series um, and also uh, the Secura case that we recently announced mm. also have a model that's completely black with small golden accents so it really fits this model. Maybe board. disable the lights? Yeah, <laughs> that sounded bad, today. disable the lights. <laughs> oh maybe this is enough, this is enough. Yeah? Yeah, I need to find the right It's like a, It's like a mirror so... Yeah. Yeah, there you can see it. Maybe show it like this. So that is our uh, Mystic Light Infinity. So it gives the infinity effect. So it it looks like it goes on and on and on forever. Um, and of course you can also control this with um, the Mystic Light software in Dragon Center. Um, you can put in different effects, different colors and also synchronize it with other RGB components that you can of course connect um, with your motherboard as well through the different headers. But there is a lot more to this board than only the lighting because this has an even bigger VR. <laughs> Everything's wet here because of your water. <laughs> this one has an even bigger VRM than- Just uh, be happy, it's just water. <laughs> I have a Coke, so I should be more careful. Mm. So we had talked about the VRMs on the previous boards. This one has 12 plus 2 plus 1 phase VRM. Yeah. Um, Comes with 2 times A pin. Yeah, 2 times A pin. So I cannot talk about it too much, but if you want to do overclocking, <laughs> I'll be silent further on. Um, but the interesting thing about this VRM is that it uses all power stages. So Dr. Moss, um, yeah. we call it. Uh, and power stages essentially combine um, different chips into one chip. The high, high MOSFET, low high MOSFET, side MOSFET, low driver. side MOSFET and driver are yeah. all incorporated in one chip. And this saves a lot of space. So also um, leaves you more space to put more faces on there. Um, so that's very interesting about that kind of VRM solution, um, which you can find on the ACE, um, but more motherboards that we will talk about a little bit later on. Um, another interesting thing about the ACE compared to the models that we saw before is the extended heat pipe cooling. So you don't only have the very big chunky heat sinks on the VRM, you will also have the extended heat pipe cooling. Let me see. Here it goes all the way to the, the chipset cooling. And this and is also as well. completely metal. Yeah. So it goes all the way around. So very long heat pipe to really help uh, spreading the heat over the motherboard um, for better dissipation. Um, then you can also see the three M.2 uh, slots um, and all our PCI Express Gen 4 yeah. and they all offer uh, the, uh, what's the name? Shield Frozer. Yeah, Shield Frozer, yeah. Somehow I couldn't come up with name. Um, we have steel armor on all DDR4 slots and on all x16 um, PCI Express slots. So yeah. this is really... Again, a, quite a big step up from the other motherboards. On the I.O. maybe interesting to show, because there's a lot of interesting stuff as well. We have the um, Flash BIOS button, we have Clear CMOS, so for 
uh, to easily reset your BIOS. For example, I cannot talk about it too much, but if you're doing overclocking and your overclock fails, you can reset it to default settings. Um, you see two uh, wired uh, LAN connectors. One is uh, an Intel Gigabit LAN, but this motherboard also offers 2.5 Gigabit LAN. This yeah, is the, the one that's marked, yeah. yeah. And that's also a trend that we see. <laughs> the one which is marked with 2.5? Uh, exactly. Oh. And with some red around it to really yeah, make clear correct. which one the 2.5 is. Um, and 2.5 is an interesting trend in the market now because we're getting the Wi-Fi 6 speeds and those far exceed 1 gigabit per second. So, of course, the wired speeds need to grow as well. And um, on modern AX routers, sometimes you can already find the 2.5 uh, gigabit LAN wired connectors. I think... Netgear already has some yeah, models that, yeah. uh, that offer this. Um, so you will not be behind with your wired connection either. And on top of that, it also has dual band Wi-Fi AX. So uh, Wi-Fi 6. Again, Wi-Fi 6 yeah. indeed, yeah. And some small uh, other overclocking features. Uh, debug LED over here. Uh, this dial, I believe everybody knows. Which is a Game Boost dial. So basically... Uh, you can uh, turn it real time. Uh, it will overclock your uh, system. Yeah. Um, then you have some buttons over here. Reset button, power button. So this board also has a lot of special overclock features. And we also have the USB 3.2 Gen 2 header for the front of your case. Yeah. This one. So this is also Type C for the front of the case. Yeah. And more and more cases uh, having this. Still mm -hmm. expensive. Yeah, it's still on the, on the higher end cases. Yeah. But of course, if you're using a higher end motherboard, it's usually combined with one of those. So cases. this one also uses ESS uh, for the audio. So we have uh, ESS audio deck, boost. So you have audio boost, boost HD on this motherboard. Yes. Um, so we'll have the, the ESS deck and uh, the amplifier for better uh, audio performance. Yeah. So very interesting board. I really like the looks of it. I was a bit hesitant in the beginning because I'm usually not really a big fan of the golden color. No. But when I saw it, I was quite Black impressed. Black and gold looks good. Yeah. It, uh, yeah, and it and really and works. We also have our uh, case, uh, Shakira, uh, and this, yeah. we have a gold version of this. And yeah, even on Computex, I saw a special AMD 50 years edition. Yeah. This looks perfect in it. Yeah, it's, it's, I really like the, the golden accents on it. Like, for example, on smartphones, you have like the completely golden smartphones. I'm never really a fan of those. No, yeah. But if it's completely black with a few golden accents, I think it's. it's now really we only nice need a gold it. lightning. I saw we already have a pink one. Yeah. Let's not talk about pink lightning. <laughs> so that was the, the Ace. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Maybe let's disconnect it first before we drop it aside. True. Let's <laughs> maybe go to the next main board. Yeah. Uh, let's disconnect it first, okay? I will keep the cable here. So these were, this was our fourth model that we've shown. And now we were still ATX, 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 ATX. Now we're going one step bigger. We're going to extend it ATX. Ooh. And the first, I'm just putting them all on top of each other. Yeah, if you don't break them, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> so this is our Prestige X570 Whoa, creation. Big a very big one. And a very hefty one. It's, uh, yeah, it's a cool motherboard. Um, creation, you might already be familiar with um, because we also had two creation models before, um, but th those are both on the high end desktop platform. So we had the X399 creation for the AMD Threadripper CPUs, and we had the uh, X299 creation for uh, the Intel high end desktop platform. Now we also have a creation model for, let's power it on. That one, yeah. All the way around. Are you sure? No. No. <laughs> Come on. Let me. It's like USB. You have to turn it twice. Yeah. And <laughs> we have, need to have Type-C for this as well. even, even the protection layers are still on there. Yeah. Maybe show it in detail cam. <laughs> Maybe you can take them off. That's always very satisfying. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. Don't you think it's satisfying to... Take off the I like satisfying things which you can repeat. <laughs> this you can only do one time. That's true. A webcam. Oh, there's some focusing problems. Do you think it switched off again? Let me check. I'm not sure. Let me just block it. Hello? Hello? <laughs> yeah, you take this board. I will. You'll fix it? No, I will try to fix it. 
Yeah. So. I know. No. So the creation series here, you might already be familiar with, uh, from the high-end desktop platform, and the creation motherboards. They're really focused um, <laughs> at content creators. Um, so this motherboard really has an emphasis on being able to. No, I have all the phones on me. <laughs> On connecting a lot of stuff to your motherboard so if you want to have a lot of adding cards if you want to have a lot of uh, usb um, peripherals that you want to connect and my arm is all wrapped in plastic <laughs> then the creation is a really interesting motherboard oh this one if you're if you're finished with all the plastic parts and sticking them on my arm <laughs> we can maybe show the io oh because yeah. the io on this motherboard it's insane this is still an engineering sample, so it, it does have Wi-Fi, but at the moment the connections are not there yet because uh, the, the card is not installed on this particular model. But of course, if you buy it, it will have Wi-Fi 6. Um, but the I.O. on this thing, it's insane. Um, so you will have... The webcam is staring up at the beauty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true that. So let me just quickly take a look at how much it does have exactly. I think I 20, 20 something, right? Okay, there it comes. So we have, in total, we have 24 USB ports. 24. Um, so we have uh, three USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A ports. So th those are, uh, no, these three? J just, I mean, we have a lot of USB ports, period. No, it's not just period, because this, this is so much that needs to be explained. Then we have the Type C. Okay, there it comes. We have 14 USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, so that's 5 gigabit per second ports. And then we have 6 USB 2.0 ports. So 2 right here, and then 4 more uh, through headers. So you can pretty much connect all your <laughs> USB devices yeah. in your house to this motherboard. And this is like by far the most impressive I.O. I have, I have ever seen. Ever seen, yeah, yeah. indeed. This is like my dream I.O. But there is more to this motherboard. As you can already see um, where Eric's thumb is, the 24 pin power connector is angled for easier installation. Sorry. Yeah. And there you can also see the mystic light flashing a little bit underneath. And also on this motherboard, the VRM is a really, really important thing. This board offers a 14 plus two plus one um, VRM. So already for just the CPU, it offers 14 power phases. So that's a lot. Um, and to cool everything properly, we have the extended heatsink here. We have a big heatsink on top as well with the extended heat pipe cooling all the way through to the bottom where we have the frozer heating. So many USBs for my activities, Dennis is saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Holy IOs. <laughs> yeah, it definitely is. So maybe we can can take uh, this part off because it's quite interesting to see because now the M.2s are um, all hidden. I will just screw this off. So it's very big, but it's actually quite easy to take it off. You only need to unscrew four screws. Sorry for the webcam quality because I'm cameraman and... So this is not just a simple shield to cool the M.2 SSDs. This is one big piece of metal to really spread the heat. Maybe show the bottom. There you also have the cooling pads. Let's take a little bit. And if we look underneath where it was positioned, we see two M.2 slots. But that's not all for this board. Because apart from the two M.2 slots on this board, I have something here. And this is the M.2 Expander Z Gen 4. So you have two M.2 slots here. And let me just open this up quickly, because now I'm taking everything apart anyway. So I might just continue with this. So it's no VGA card. It's no VGA card. <laughs> And don't mix up the screws. No, no, no. These are a lot bigger. So, it's yeah. easy. so this, this board, um, the creation is made for content creation, of yeah. course. So uh, you need a lot of uh, cores on the CPU uh, and you need a lot of storage. Yeah. 
here we have the uh, M.2 Expander Z Gen 4 card. So this is also PCI Express Gen 4. So you can, of course, use oh, this. Oh, shaking. Didn't you drink something? Yeah, let me take a sip oh. of Coke. I need some sugar. So this also has um, so fully supports Gen 4 SSDs. Uh, two of them. Um, if you have the heat sink here. It's a heavy this heat is, sink. Yeah, it's really heavy. It's really thick. It's really This is full metal. Why not against your head? <laughs> <laughs> because then everyone knows it's empty up there. <laughs> <laughs> your head. Yeah. <laughs> so it has a fan in there, but because it's such a hefty heat sink, um, in most circumstances, you will not need uh, the fan. So on the PCB, we have a nice switch. And there you can also simply turn it off or on. There's also power connect on there, right? Yeah. So up here, in case um, there will be very fast Gen 4 M.2 SSDs that consume too much power for yeah, your Yeah, we were discussing this with the technical people and, and we said, I mean, are there any SSDs who will consume this? They said at this moment, if you use four, four Optane SSDs, then you can increase the what a PCI Express slot can deliver in power. Yeah. Um, this one has two, so at this point it's not, there are no SSDs yet that consume such an amount of power. Yeah, so it's future-proof. So it's future-proof. So yeah, um, yeah, that's the, the M.2 Expander Z Gen yeah, 4. So basically you get one, two, three, four. Four M.2 Gen 4 slots. Yeah. So all of them support Gen 4. Wow. It's going to be fast. Yeah. Let me see if we have any questions. Uh, yeah, people are talking about the, the thick heat sink. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, a very, very large IO for this uh, motherboard. A lot of expandability. Um, you can also see we have, maybe you can go to the close-up cam because now we have the heatsink off anyway, so it's easy to show everything. This Because on this motherboard you can, for example, now clearly see these are the USB or the PCI Express Gen 4 switches. Yes. So that's for switching from 1 times 16 to 2 times 8 if you want to use multiple graphics cards, for example. And these four chips are the PCI Express Gen 4 read drivers. So they really make sure that you get a stable and fast PCI Express Gen 4 signal to every Gen 4 slot on the motherboard. Yeah, I, I think something uh, interesting to this one as well uh, is, um, let me see, 10 gig. You're already going to my next point. Okay, sorry. Well, <laughs> no, it's fine, it's fine. So we have you're the host today. <laughs> so we have also, now it's not installed on this board. This is still an engineering sample. Um, but this will also have Wi-Fi 6 yeah. uh, from Intel. Then we have Intel 1 gigabit LAN. So that's the port there. And it has an Aquantia 10 gigabit LAN. So that we think that's especially important for content creators because they work a lot with huge files. For example, in 4K or even 8K video uh, editing, those files will, will get huge. So if you want to transfer them, for example, to an external server or anything, that's where uh, you really benefit from 10 gigabit LAN. Of yeah. course, your network needs to be uh, um, 10 gigabit supported as well to make use of it. But uh, I think it's def definitely for the kind of people that would use a motherboard like this, that's a really interesting feature. Yeah, somebody's uh, asking about audio. So this is the audio part. We use Audio Boost 4, uh, basically uh, ALC 1120 um, with uh, audio capacitors, uh, separated audio PCB, so you get a warm signal and uh, no interference. And in the back, uh, let me see here. In the meanwhile, I'll put this back together again. Yeah, focus. Uh, here you have the audio connectors, including one SPDIF digital. You're going to put it back together? Yeah, maybe we should put the board back together as well. Oh my god. Okay. That's you always the downside of taking stuff apart. Nah, apart is a lot this, of this fun. Is, uh, but simple. Putting them back together again. Yeah, that one's quite easy. Oh, so I have been no screwdriver. For this, you will only need 
four screws, of which two are the M.2 screws to take it off. So this is actually quite easy later on with the next motherboard. Um, so we will take the complete heat sink, God -like everything we will out. remove everything. Yeah. We will take the, the whole uh, heat sink apart. So it's back together. And I think then we can finally continue to the last motherboard, the one that everyone has been waiting for. We still oh. need that card because that card also comes with our next model. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, maybe... Uh... Well, we can do one more giveaway. Yeah. So if you haven't participated yet, uh, on top you can see the link, go to msi.com slash two slash insider. If you cannot see the link there, Eric will also post it in chat. Um, you'll have a chance to win one of the 20 US dollars team wallet codes. Um, the more actions you perform um, on game, the bigger chance you will have to win. So definitely try as many as possible. Let me just connect this again. And do we have another winner? Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> you, you just promised that you would. Yeah, I did already. <laughs> uh, Angelo uh, Bitasta do Nascimento. Yeah. His name sounds, sounds like where Topical. he should live. Yeah, topical. <laughs> yeah, indeed, indeed. Congratulations. You also Angelo, uh, congratulations. In the coming days, you will get... Oh, detailed cam is going. So first it was your water, now it's the detailed cam. Yeah, well, you know. Okay. Should be fine, should be fine. Okay, got bike. Yeah. And that one's cool. We already teased you a little bit with the box right here. And here we have the board itself. Again, very big, it's very heavy. This is also like the creation, an extended ATX motherboard. So let me just show it up close. Yeah, oh, oh maybe plug in the... Let me just adjust the camera a little bit. There we go. Yeah, let's plug in the lighting because the lighting on this board is very cool, I think. It has quite a lot of RGB. And I will also switch off the lights because one of the really cool features about our new Godlike is that it has Mystic Light Infinity 2. Uh, maybe that one? Yeah. Mm, I so need to... on Ace you could already see the Mystic Light Infinity. Um, that one works with small dots. Mystic Light Infinity 2 has a cool new effect. Maybe we can show it up close. It's maybe a little bit hard to see now. So you don't have the dots, you will have a cool line effect. <laughs> like this. It's very, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think. Maybe you can put it even closer to the cam. No, the cable. <laughs> the cable is oh. too short? No, it's okay. Yeah, now it's easier to see. The the weird effect that you see is the, the it's oh. the green light because we're using a green screen. The purple so is gets, green. Yeah, the purple yeah. is green. <laughs> so that one gets keyed out. Um, then you will also have Mystic Light in your uh, chipset heatsink here. So there we can already see it. And what you can also already see in the preview is right there the dynamic dashboard and at the moment it's like in a preview mode but you can also use dynamic dashboard for example to show the clock speeds to show um, your temperatures but also if you um, have your own logo or something or you want to put your name there you can uh, use the software to uh, to use your own gif in there um, so it can also be an animated gif and you can uh, show it through dynamic dashboard Shall I put the lights back on? Yeah. So we can see a little bit more of the motherboard. Wow. Maybe first talk about dynamic uh, dashboard before you go. I mean, you're going to take everything off, right? Yeah. And we don't know if you can put everything back. Uh, I can. It takes a while, but I can. Yeah. So <laughs> do that. Do that tomorrow. Yeah. So now dynamic dashboard is still working. Here you see the preview. Yeah, that, that's that's my point. It's still working. And when you take everything off. Yeah, then uh, it might not be working. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so now you have the preview, but you can adjust that with uh, your own logo, with 
Um, you can you can uh, customize your own uh, files, speeds, upload it. Yeah. Uh, it can display clock speeds, temperatures, um, etc. Yeah. Now it's in demo mode, uh, and like again because of the NDA, we're not allowed to show a running x570 board here. So. So for now we have to stick with. This uh, is not running. Memory. We have like we have a small cable on here, and it powers basically. This is the demo mode essentially. Yeah. No CPU. See. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, for the godlike, you can already see a little bit of it. The VRMs on this one, it's like all the way. So this motherboard has a 14 plus 4 plus 1. VRM on there. Maybe let's first talk about the, the other things because VRM I think we best can show when you when you remove everything. Yeah, yeah, we will later on show it in but detail. But then maybe some other things we cannot show anymore. Oh, we can show everything. Okay, okay. <laughs> you, you, you do your thing. But do you mean with everything still on? Yeah. Yeah. We have oh, oh, good point, right? Yeah, it's a good point. I wasn't going to take everything on yet. I was mm. just teasing mm. the huge power delivery that's on this motherboard. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, so you can see four times 16 slots. Of course, the amount of lanes, the, the number of lanes is dependent on um, on the exact configuration that you're using. Um, of course, this uh, motherboard does support the switching, so you can use it for SLI with two times eight. It has three M.2 slots. All of them support Gen 4. All of them have um, M.2 Shield Frozer on there. The, there is steel armor on all four PCI Express time 16 slots, but also on the, the DDR4 memory slots. We see the gain boost again, so the dial, maybe you can show it on that side on the bottom. The dial that was also on Ace is of course also present on Godlike. Yeah, I need to show it like this. So for easy overclocking also, um, but also if you want to do more extensive overclocking, there are many features for that. There's, uh, an interesting feature about this model is the dual BIOS. You can actually already see the two BIOS chips right there. So in case something goes wrong with your overclock, it has a second uh, BIOS just to be sure. So you can always switch back to the other BIOS. IO Shield, of course, integrate IO Shield. Uh, uh, one very interesting thing about this model is the audio because this one has um, extreme audio deck. Um, but it also offers a 6.3 millimeter connector. So, for example, if you're using professional headphones that often use this type of connector, you can directly connect it to your motherboard. Um, it also has double amplifiers, so not only for the rear of your motherboard, but also for the front. Yeah, this I think we can later when we remove everything, you can really nice. Yeah, we can show some more stuff. We can yeah. show a lot more when we start taking everything apart. Um, yeah, so what, what else? 2.5 gig LAN. 2.5 gig... Uh, Actually, th this this is uh, uh, has a lot of... Yeah, so this has both Intel 1 gigabit LAN and Intel 2.5 gigabit LAN. No, killer. Or, uh, sorry, yeah? this is killer. You're right, this has killer on everything. Yes. This has killer 1 gigabit LAN, killer 2.5 gigabit LAN, and killer Wi-Fi 6. Yes. And it also supports killer extend. And? And? What's that there, below the table? Yeah, that's that was still a surprise. That's still a surprise. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, we will show it. So the creation, we already talked about 10 gigabit LAN, and it uses an Aquantia chip for that. Um, but with the Godlike, of course, you want to go all out. So for gamers, Killer is the best networking solution you can get. You can have perfect bandwidth management, etc. So you have Killer, one gig. Killer 2.5 gig. Killer Wi-Fi. Killer Wi-Fi 6. Wi-Fi 6. But we also have this card. And this is essentially the Aquantia 10 gigabit chip that we know from the creation on a separate oh card. And this is added in the box. So you will have uh, four types of network interfaces to choose from. Um, cool. So if you're going for full gaming, Definitely use Killer because you have the yeah. perfect bandwidth management, stuff like that. If you're more of a content creator but still decide to buy the Godlike because it has everything, you, it has everything <laughs> pretty much, um, then you can also use 10 gigabit LAN through this uh, separate card that comes included in the box. And it also, apart from the three um, Gen 4 M.2 slots, 
It also comes with the same M.2 Expander C Gen 4 that we've shown with the creation. So you can have a total of five M.2 Gen 4 slots One, on the guard line. One, two, three, four, five. Exactly. We already opened it before. Yeah. So that's a lot of crazy fast storage. Now, do your thing. So uh, let's open it up. Uh, let's. Uh, I will remove the power. Okay. Yeah. I mean, and I will just we don't take, want you to... Take it apart. Ah, it's fine. It's only a low voltage. I'll survive. So we already, we cheated a little bit. We took a few screws oh, out uh, already. This is uh, maybe interesting to show. Oh. This is an engineering board. So you see those uh, blue... The blue headers are still on there. So yeah. also still an engineering sample, not the final model. Yeah. So now you... Let's take it all off. So I already prepared this a little bit. So I already like you removed twenty screws I, and you I only removed, left two. I uh, left four for the main uh, part and two for the I/O shroud. Okay, cool. There we go. And we need to take out a couple of connectors, for example, for the RGB lighting, yeah. um, but also the fan connector um, for the for the chipset, which is. Uh, also interesting, it's a four pin PWM fan. So now I have all the screws off. Let's turn it around. Hope I didn't forget anything. Maybe show like this. So now we're going to disassemble everything. So first we take the shroud off. Um, here you can see cable connector. That's for the um, RGB. Mystic Light Infinity 2. Yeah, the RGB. Um, and there we can already see the first interesting part. The special capacitors. Uh, th those are the VMAC capacitors for the yeah. audio. So normally you cannot see them because there's a shroud on top. Now you can clearly see them. And yeah, so this board has uh, two, uh, two audio chips on there. So at the same time you can enjoy audio on the front and on the rear. Let me see if I have... Yeah. Oh. There we go. So this is a big... Ah, wait. We forgot a couple of screws. We well, also you. Need you. Why, why include me? <laughs> I also need to take off the oh Ender 2 shield trousers. So this one has three of them. We. Oui. Because those are incorporated with the chipset cooling. And there we can see the next unique feature of this godlike motherboard. Let me take everything off. We have two connectors. One for the fan and one for the RGB. I will take this one off as well. Display. Oh. There we go. So uh, this is don't try this at home. <laughs> Here you see a naked X570 Godlike. So not suitable for work. Um, an interesting thing with the Android 2 slots on the Godlike is that it offers dual sided cooling. And this will give you a temperature advantage. It will be like five to seven degrees lower temperatures. So it cools the SSD from both sides, especially if you have like uh, SSDs with very large storage capacity, they will also have uh, chips on the rear side of the SSD and this will cool it on both sides. Yeah, maybe talk a little bit about uh, the VRM. I actually have something very nice to quickly explain the VRM before we show it on the motherboard. Okay, uh, let me switch to that. So here you have a very nice overview um, of the VRM on the Godlike. Um, so as you can see, we're using two 8-pin power connectors. They provide the power to the IR35201 PWM controller, a fully digital PWM controller, which is displayed in yellow. Um, then we have the Infineon TDA2147-2 uh, power stages, and they can uh, provide up to 70 amps per power stage. So those are, this is the best you can get at this moment um, for the power delivery of your CPU. Yeah. Um, and there are actually uh, 18 of those uh, power stages incorporated on this motherboard of which 14 are dedicated for your processor cores. Yeah, so it's 14 plus 
plus four. Plus four. And plus there's one. an additional phase, but that one is below there. Yeah. Um, and so then the, the, the 14 is for the CPU, uh, 4 is for the Uncore, mm -hmm. um, and then the 1 is for the, um, uh, how do you say, for the PCI Express or for the memory? For the PCI Express, PCI right? Express, yeah. yes. Memory is separated. Yeah. Um, yeah, so a lot of power phases uh, and really strong power phases as well. Um, but also on the back of the motherboard, you can see it uh, in the, yeah, what is it, like pink, purple square. You see the doublers on there. So it has phase doublers. So uh, Kimura, Kimura is... is asking, does it use doublers? Yes, yes it, does. it definitely does. Um, and this will, for example, give you better efficiency, better performance. Yeah, it's uh, using doublers indeed is to lower down the temperature, uh, increasing efficiency. Uh, there are a lot of people who, you know, yes doublers, no doublers. Uh, we always, um, I mean, both both solutions have a, um, have their uh, own advantage uh, and disadvantage. Yeah, indeed. If you but go, if you take everything in consideration, I really think that doublers is yeah, the right way to go. Indeed, because uh, I mean, uh, it will give a little bit delay on the PDOM, uh, but for CPU, this is really no problem. If you talk about GPU, yeah. which is uh, sw switching much faster, then this is a real issue. Yeah. Um, so and, and doublers uh, they increase the efficiency and that's really important on these high-end boards. Exactly. And we also have the titanium two chokes. Yes. Um, and for every phase there's one titanium. Well, two you choke. can also show that here, right? Yeah, we can if we have to close up. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So maybe we can just point everything so out. Yeah. So I let me just explain uh, it quickly. Don't scratch it. I, I won't scratch it. This is, I mean, it, Mike, Mike gave it to me. <laughs> lucky, lucky, lucky gave it to me. We cannot see the top. Can you put it a little bit back? So, yeah. Mm, maybe like this. There we are. Now we can see everything. So here we have the two times. Well, not with connection. your hands before it. There. Maybe, maybe yeah. from this side. That's better. Then the PWM but controller. I, you, you need to do it because okay. I'm like... If you point to the PWM. No. Oh, I need to do it? I'll scratch it. <laughs> Let me see, it's a little bit hard. There we have a fully digital PWM that will provide a signal to the um, the power stages yeah. right here. And then he, these are the titanium chokes and there are the capacitors. So that's the VRM for the godlike. So this is a 14 plus 4 plus 1 uh, phase. Uh, VRM for the godlike. Yeah. It uses uh, DDR4 boost again, but we cannot talk about it. No. That's uh, for it's later. still NDA. Yeah. So for further memory details, we will talk about that later. Yeah, so Not this is one, one beast of a board. Yeah. yeah. So very strong power delivery, very extensive audio. You can also see a huge amount of chips here underneath where they. Uh, I think this is also interesting detail. Yeah. You know, uh, look already at how big this is. <laughs> yeah, just the, the cooling part. Uh, this is the, the the cooling part. So you you have the fan here. We talked earlier about that. Why the need is for that. Everything is uh, made of uh, iron, so it's uh, one big piece of iron. Uh, of course, there is a little plastic grill on top of the fan, uh, and here we have some uh, RGB LED uh, below it. Um, then you have the heat pipe, uh, which goes from the, um, well, I mean, I don't, don't know which side it will go, uh, but uh, from the VRM to the chipset or from the chipset to the VRM. Uh, mm -hmm. It extends until here. Then you have a, a huge heatsink with a lot of surface for the VRM. So each of these cuts uh, increases the surface. On both the side and the top. Yeah. Then you have the fins, and this is done on, on top as well. This is a top heatsink. Um, and then one small detail, uh, which most people will never see, is on the bottom. You see this? All these small... They're no dense. What are they? Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, I don't know what the word for it the, is. The surface here is increasing. Yeah. Uh, it's increasing the surface. It's a special structure to increase the surface area for better cooling. Yeah. All these kind of things, uh, uh, they help. And so, thi uh, this is all metal. Like even all the way up here to where the dynamic dashboard is, yeah. this is all metal. Yeah. Oh, this should put back on, right? Hmm? 
yeah that's why you shouldn't take it apart because there yeah. are also the cooling pads on the heat pipes and uh, if you take it off usually you need to replace them yeah let's do that so maybe if we turn it around we also have the two connectors on the back mm, so like this yeah so here we have the four pin pwm connector for the uh for the fan right here and this one is the rgb connector for the rgb lighting in the chipset heatsink yeah so okay uh so what are you going to do tomorrow <laughs> put everything back together i think yeah <laughs> will it ever work again yeah it should be fine <laughs> yeah. oh maybe maybe show the people the indeed chipset i mean now we have it maybe a little bit hard to see but yeah let me <clears throat> i'm not sure how how close up i can get it yeah like this on top uh what is it ah, yeah. um navy seal snake is asking are there different segments of the godlike although i think the one i'm looking at is bundled with the extra adding cards there is only there will be one version of the godlike available that comes with the adding cards so godlike will always come with the m.2 expander c gen 4 and with the 10 gigabit lan card yeah so this is a, a very nice motherboard and now it looks like not nice anymore <laughs> it looks impressive yeah it still is impressive if yeah. you're into technology i think uh, it looks even cooler without all this <laughs> yeah absolutely absolutely <laughs> i'm a fan of it at least yeah so i think um that's it right yeah for this week uh so if uh, uh, yeah any questions you can still drop them in the chat um why has streaming boost already been uh, killed off? Uh, well, streaming boost was a feature on uh, one of our older boards. And I think nowadays, you know, at that moment, the CPU was, uh, streaming was still very uh, um, uh, CPU intense. So we wanted to offload the CPU uh, to put it on a dedicated streaming card. Uh, but currently, this is not needed anymore. Um, let me see... Ace will be half price. Yeah, we cannot uh, talk about pricing at this moment. I'm sorry. All NDA. Yep. Thank you, Mike. Oh, we 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 lost half of the chat. We need <laughs> we need yeah. to we need to put the other chat up again. Yeah. Okay. Overclocking. <laughs> Legos. Yeah, we cannot call it Lego. Yeah. Oh, I used to love Lego when I was young. And now that switch to motherboards, so mm, instead of good. <laughs> building that, looks great even underneath. I think it's quite interesting because it's not something that many people see, see usually. Yeah? yeah, that's indeed. That's why we show this as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, we will still do one lucky draw. Um, Meadow Scientist is asking, what is the lens speed on this board? This one, if you're using a wired connection, it actually has uh, three options. So on the IO, you will have a one, you have two killer lens. One is one gigabit, the other one is 2.5 gigabit. And it also comes with the 10 gigabit uh, Aquantia adding card. And you have Wi Fi. Wi -Fi and you 6. have Wi Fi 6, also yeah. from Killer. For Whatever Godlike. that may be. Yeah. Wi Fi 6. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about it. We talked yeah, about yeah. it. Um, our last winner for today is Danny Hood. Uh, congratulations. congratulations. In the coming days, you will get a. Uh, Steam voucher code sent to you by email. Uh, thanks for participating. And I think that's it for today. So, I mean, we covered all X570 boards. You damaged one? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> okay. We, we, next week, we will let you know. Yeah. Next week, we will, will uh, let you know fine. if this one still works. As long as Eric doesn't touch it, it's fine. Yeah. So, next week, we're, we're going <laughs> to actually, Ja is going to have a. Live stream about our uh, gaming chair, and I can tell you it's comfortable. Yeah, but he's going to show you. <laughs> he's going to show you how you put, how you assemble it, uh, all the features because it's a quite interesting gaming chair. Oh, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I I I saw how slow you were with those slides, so it must I, be comfortable. I was just relaxing, yeah, <laughs> relaxing on the chair. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, definitely uh, check it out. Yeah. So the uh, MHG CH110. So each nice. Wednesday, um, same place, same time. Yeah, indeed. So thanks for joining. 
See you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.